So we've been contemplating the Jagat Utpatti chapter of Tattva Bodha through Prabhuji's uh, talks. And uh, we've been uh, looking at uh, the talks related to that in uh, 50, uh, 57, 58, 59, 60 onwards. So we'll continue from there. We will, uh, uh, I hope today can uh, be able to conclude the Jagat Utpatti and move on to the last chapter of uh, Tattva Bodha. Yes, sir, Anunji. So Vijay ji, looks like uh, 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 T59 itself, uh, it's shifting gears to the next. I noticed that like we are trying to say the oneness. Correct, correct. So, yeah. From here onwards, it is, uh, what is the way a realized one uh, is? So, uh, what what is the basic structure of Tattva Bodha? If you really think about it, you know, there are only four major chapters. Adhikari Tattva. Who is eligible? Who is eligible for what? For the self-knowledge. For the realization of the self-knowledge. So, it is like there has to be a certain preparation. The ground has to be ready in order to see, uh, in order to grow certain kind of a fruit. Only then can a certain fruit appear. So Adhikari Tattva gives us the clarity. I have to develop those shat sampatis. Only when I develop those shat sampatis, can I be ready for the next chapters. So in the traditional uh, teachings, therefore, Vedanta used to come at the end. So for the one who is seeking self-knowledge, the guru would usually prepare them through rigorous uh, sadhana, which usually would include a lot of karma yoga, offering a selfless service, depending upon the mindset of the student, various kinds of uh, service activities they would be involved with. As the guru notices that the student is ready, the six uh, sampats or the shat sampatis are the like the barometer. With that, then they would be taken into Vedanta. And also it is said that Vedanta used to be taught mainly in uh, ashram kind of environments. So especially the deeper uh, uh, Vedanta uh, subjects were available only in the ashram kind of environments. And now, as it has been brought out to be used by even uh, uh, the so-called grihasthas, uh, to be learned by even so-called grihasthas, here, bringing that rigorous quality of, okay, is the preparedness there, is not necessarily, um, can, cannot be implemented uh, in the same rigorous way as in the ashram environment. Because there the guru is there and the shishya has to go there and live there. And the guru's observation uh, is, is there in order to help the shishya, whether the shishya is ready. However, the purpose of giving the Adhikari Tattva by Shankaracharya is so that we can reflect on it. Like Bhagavad Gita, even Tattva Bodha is uh, not a, a mere conceptual uh, or a intellectual uh, subject. Oh, I know the term, I know Jiva, I know Jagat, I know Brahman. That is not the point of uh, Tattva Bodha. Tattva Bodha is also a transformation subject. For that matter, the entire uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Vedanta, they are all transformation texts. Meaning what? I have to realize that truth that is being shown by the seer, the perceptor. In this case, it is Sri Shankaracharya. And I have to develop that internal discrimination. Why? 
to once again make my life happy healthy peaceful and only when i make it happy healthy peaceful it will naturally spread around me it's like a, a flower when it blooms naturally naturally bees will come it is not that the flower has to advertise the blooming of the flower is a natural phenomena for the bees to come and for others to appreciate but the flower is not blooming so that the others can appreciate that's the nature of the flower like that to recognize the true nature is the inherent uh, drive why any one of us seeks anything in life is to naturally find that eternal bliss in all our activities as the tattva buddha talk itself began by prabhu ji in all our activities what is that we are seeking the activity or what the activity gives is is not the the object it gives is not what we truly want we want that happiness we are constantly seeking that happiness and through a structured study we can realize where it is so the transformation is the important uh, purpose of any of our study so starting with adhikara tatva to develop those shat sampatis because the mind has to be uh, subtle enough here the truths are the uh, discriminatory uh, uh, tools that are being given by shankaracharya are like this sharp knife but where is that knife it is nothing but when shankaracharya gives us satya asatya or the uh, mithya so where can i recognize that what is mithya what is asatya what is satya by applying my intellect so my intellect has to become sharp enough when can it become sharp everybody's intellect uh, has that capacity but if the mind is occupied with other objects of the world the mind cannot be perceptive enough so by giving the adhikari tatva as a gate to enter into this shankaracharya is not discriminating shankaracharya ji is saying if these are there naturally you will be able to flow into the rest because mind that is full of anger or worry or tension will not be able to sit and contemplate the subtler aspects so it is it is for the benefit of the student otherwise the student may throw this wonderful jewel as worthless you you know that story you know a diamond given to uh, um, a guru gives a diamond to a, a, st a student because the student is asking i have been learning for so long you know i don't know what is the value of it so he takes it to an ordinary uh, street side vendor he, he says you know it is worthless maybe 10 rupees i'll give you so like that you know guru uh, uh, teaches him to go to some other uh, vendor every time you know he goes and finds out uh, it is so much more valuable finally the diamond merchant says i cannot value it this is much more you have to go to maybe a king i don't know whether even king can give you value to this so that is the essence of whatever we are receiving but sometimes when it is seen as a theoretical text it doesn't uh, become that the value is when it becomes a tool for transformation so from adhikara tatva then the atma bodha where the discriminatory technique to recognize the atma and anatma is given that helps to recognize who i am the one who is thinking i am the body i am the mind to recognize who i am so first is recognition of the self in me whatever the concept of me is to begin with to recognize who i am then now we are in the third chapter jagat utpatti okay what is this world so you may recall the fundamental questions are 
who I am, what is this world, what is my connection to this world? That's all the fundamental question is. Once one that is resolved and clearly established, naturally, the world is not apart from me. World is me only. World is my reflection only. Then what is there to hate in the world? What is there to disagree with in the world? I, I, I love this as much as this. So world is nothing but me only. So in that, Vasudeva Kutumbakam is a natural feeling. So that is a transformation. Who am I? Aham Brahmasmi. That recognition, not as a statement, but as a living feeling. What is this world? Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. All that is there is that divine consciousness only. In that, there is no separation. And that separation is the main goal. Removal of that separation is the main goal of any of these scriptures. Because the mind is deeply rooted in the, the world of uh, separation. That is the transformation. From a, I am somebody. You know who I am? I am uh, uh, this person, this role, this uh, money, whatever, whatever adjectives we use to describe ourselves. I am, you know who I am? I am the son of such and such. A, I, am, I was born in this family. You know what my religion is? You know who I am? I am a somebody to recognize that I am nobody. Because see, the power of the nobody the power of the nobody is you can be everybody. When you are somebody, you are utterly limited to that boundary that you have put for yourself. I am a husband, illimited. I am belonging to this particular uh, jati or uh, community or whatever, whatever may be the boundary. It is still a limited boundary. I am somebody is always limited. To recognize that I am nobody. I am nobody is not a very Ayori, I am nobody. Ayo. Not in that way. I am nobody. I am not the body. That is the biggest freedom. In that nobodyness, in that recognition of the nobodyness, then I can be everybody. Because it is that divine awareness which is operating everywhere. So naturally Vasudaiva Kutumbakam. So these two are not two separate uh, then statements. That Aham Brahma means Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. They are like uh, two sides of the same coin. For that matter, all the four Mahavakyas are of the same. But it is taking a particular uh, viewpoint to help us, to help us in our journey. It is like Tattvamasi, uh, Prabhuji says in his talks, Tattvamasi is the Upadesha. You are that only. For somebody who thinks, you know, I'm somebody, it's a Upadesha. Recognize you are that, what the divine awareness. So then when that student takes that uh, viewpoint and faithfully uh, does the journey, the realization of nobodiness, aham brahmasmi, not as a word, not as a statement, but recognition of that, aham brahmasmi. And then in that process, the world is nothing but me and my reflection only. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. So you can either realize deeply that you are nobody or you include everybody in your uh, feeling, in your actions. Both essentially are the same zero and infinity in that sense 
are the same. Not that they are the same objects, because they are not like objects. Zero and infinity. Nothing and everything are uh, related to the same. Everything is the manifestation of the, the divine consciousness. The Shiva, Shiva's Shakti is everything. And Shiva is that nothing. So Shiva and Shakti cannot be separated. So that is the third chapter, Jagat Utpati. When this is clear, when this is realized, and this is the way of the life, this is deeply realized and it is the way of the life, how the life is going to be of such a realized being is the focus of the, uh, our subsequent contemplations. In a way, it is like the Palashruti. Typically, our scriptures have a, this is what the, uh, uh, you know, this particular scripture is about. Then, of course, the human mind asks, okay, what will I get? Why I should do it? Palashruti. <laughs> so, but uh, the whole idea is, you know, the questioner has to dissolve. The one who is seeking the Palashruti has to dissolve. Then the Palashruti uh, is just for the sake of somebody else. Hey, this is what will happen. But the whole idea is the one who started asking the question is no more there. So quite a wonderful journey. From a somebody to a nobody to an everybody. The journey of life is a wonderful uh, exploration. And it opens to, you know, the mystery. The mystery. Aha. What a... It's like... Uh, Aum, right? Ah, it's Adbhuta. What a, what a wonderful world it is. You know, so nice. You know, uh, how, look at that bird. Look at that flower. Look at everything. My God, like a little child, there is no end to the mystery of this world. Adbhuta. Ah, is Adbhuta. In that Adbhuta, when you, when you see everything as Adbhuta, then naturally there is oh, Utsaha. Utsaha is that, oh, you know, it's like the child's energy. That Utsaha is naturally there. Ooh. And then when you relish something so nice, right? Mm, ah. See? Aum. Ah, is Advata Utsaha. Ah, so nice. So life is like that. So Shankaracharya is giving us that uh, insight. So with this, let's dive into our uh, today's uh, contemplation. So which chapter or which particular topic uh, we were supposed to begin with, uh, Sarunanji? Uh, yeah, 59. From 59. Okay, all right. So let's uh, begin from here. Um, would you start, uh, Sarunanji? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so here I see that like there is a shift uh, in the flow because in the last uh, last uh, talk uh, where we covered too deeply into uh, how from one the three gunas, panchabhutas and everything they mixed and to form everything, whatever we see and who we are. Now, uh, a different view is being given here. Uh, where uh, uh, Shankaracharya says, like, uh, he's comparing our our life to to a movie, right? So we see that uh, we see a movie being played on a screen. So uh, there are two things, right? One, you need a screen on which you want to the the movie is getting projected. This that screen is like the Brahman on which the whole movie um, of life is played by Maya right? and like the characters are like the Jeeva or the Jeevas. So uh, the thing to note here is uh, neither the movie nor the screen are attached in the sense 
they are aware of what is going on right the screen is uh, is like um, uh, i would say like emotionless about what is what type of movie is being played right it it, it is not aware of aware of what is going on going on in the movie at all right and if you look at that then the brahman in some way is not aware of what a jiva is going through right a jiva is like the actor um, playing the role in the in the movie <clears throat> so so uh, the with, with the screen being the brahman and the the two other players uh, the uh, the jagat and the jiva and even the ishwara right so uh, the part of the movie okay? and looks like uh, ramana maharshi said you can see uh, uh, they are all one because you can see a man like a moving tree or 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 you can it's or a tree as a standing man it's all about labeling at the end of the day right uh, you, it, uh, it's from the perspective of how you how you say certain how you label something right uh, it's about the way i see is like it's about the use of words right um, so but but the point is uh, they are all like made of very similar thing which is again a brahman only and um, uh, here the the mix that creates is a real and unreal part where the real part is is from brahman uh, the awareness the consciousness what we call as atma and the unreal part is is the the body body mind uh, intellect right which comes and goes while uh the brahman alone remains the atman uh, again remains right and uh, uh so again going back to uh, uh the question of like so if brahman alone is there uh, uh, how, how does the whole thing happen right is talking like one way to visualize is like brahman the pure light atma jyoti when it falls on the uh uh the i think it was uh, not here i think should i move it the, um yeah maybe i will come back to that later yeah it is in the if other talk okay so here um uh again going back to that question of like uh, uh, why is brahman not aware uh, one again uh, example given is like going to the sun and asking about uh the light or the darkness the sun is like full full of light right and so it doesn't know anything else other than light or or darkness so it doesn't even know that light it is only that so same way brahman is full of awareness only awareness and uh, and you you cannot uh, ask brahman about anything else because it is that right uh, so that that is one example uh, given about why brahman is not aware of uh, 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 the uh, agnara agnara or uh, 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 what do you say ignorance ignorance <laughs> thank you uh, yeah so the other example given is uh, about how the electricity flows through different objects like fan and bulb while you see that like they give different use cases are like uh, they they come to life in different ways but it is it is the electricity that gives life to them the same way uh, brahman alone the power of brahman manifest in different ways and uh, which is what we see as like the differences actually but all those differences come to life from from what brahman right uh, so that that's that's why be a tree or a man or a stone it is just that the the uh, the power of brahman is manifested in different different ways but uh, at the end it's sarvam sarvam kalvidam brahma it's they are all like made of one and they are one only yeah, that and just because like they look different for us uh, or like from uh, from uh, from for agnani due to ignorance they will see it as different but once you see how these are formed then you you see that like 
they are all one okay another another illustration given is like how when uh, sunlight falls um, in the in, in bucket of water right uh, so from there you you see you see that like um, uh, you you see the reflection right and and it is um, that reflection uh, if you see uh, the the sun is huge in the sense it, it it can light up the entire world but it can show up as a small one in in, in the water in a bucket of water and right? similarly they say that uh, uh, when the light of the brahman falls on the uh, on the the subtle body the mind which has the desire uh, jiva is born and that jiva uh, feels limited because of of the the conditioning of the so uh, of that again due to ignorance and and like the samsara starts there because the real nature is infinite but you feel limited to to that body or actually to to your thought the body is again to the finally it goes down to that thought right so one uh, so basically at the end the jiva is nothing but the one who has forgotten the real nature and when he discovers that he becomes that brahman Right. so in this talk i see that like uh, uh, the guru has given lot of examples to to show the the relation between the jiva and the and the brahman and and how they are related to the jagat that's how i see in this talk excellent so let's uh, hear uh, yeah yashuba ji you wanted to ask something or say something no, i i just couldn't understand this particular part where she uh, ramana maharishi uh, no ramana maharishi says a hmm. man can be set as a moving tree and a tree as a standing man i didn't understand that particular part sir. can you explain yes yeah, sarvan ji can you yeah so uh, as i said it's it's how we perceive right so uh, at the end of the day uh each what are all these different objects they are nothing but man different ways of brahman itself manifesting in different forms right like for example uh let's take clay it is clay but i can make the clay into to something look like looking like a mountain or i can make the clay like a wheel right uh, and and like that that wheel can run Right, uh, while the mountain sits, right, but the base is still the clay. So you can make the clay into multiple use cases, mul- many forms, different types of forms, right. So same way, uh, that's how I understood that uh, uh, the same. It's the same Brahman, but like a, a tree doesn't move. A man, say, let's say, moves, but then uh, they are all one. It's just that uh, the manifestation of Brahman is different. so that is why he is saying that um, uh, you can say that it's at the end of it's it's how we label label right uh, i we i hear that like they use this uh, phrase a lot nama roopa vyavahara right uh, it's all about name and form at the end of the day the uh, in guru ji has done in one of the talks he says right when he shows you something what is that first thing happens immediately we say that ah it's a red color flower but then again the moment we label it we stop uh, we limit actually what we see to what we know and right? but if you remove that name and form then you say that something uh, it has some shape it has some color and then like you can keep going beyond and right? so usually it is the uh, we always try to uh, 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 generalize to something we know and and that is where uh, the we start differentiating and and we start seeing in a different different ways but when you try to not generalize it if you start looking uh, deeper uh, without giving the name and form then like you are basically going beyond what you see so that that's how uh, i i kind so, of interpreted it yeah so this statement is connected to the uh, explanation given like uh, all stone tree human is every, everyone is the same only thing is we as humans have a higher purpose and 
uh, know that we have to uh, uh, ultimately re- realize our Brahman unlike a stone or a tree, correct? Okay. 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 Is that how it is that uh, is that related to this statement? Um, so no, I'm trying to understand. I, I, I couldn't understand that part uh, even while uh, watching the video. So I had this question in my mind that I had to ask here. That's why I'm asking you. So that yeah, so, part I didn't understand. Okay, so so the the from the name and form part, th- this is how I, I understood. And and the other thing, uh, maybe I missed it in the sense I but I've read that uh, the human is the most evolved of of the living beings. Uh, where like you have that capability to to contemplate. Right? Now, does that part come in this talk? The, the I don't know. Is evolved. Yeah. Does that part come in this talk? Yeah, yeah. Prabhuji says uh, uh, we as humans uh, uh, that is why we have a um, that the consciousness part is there in us uh, whereas a tree and stone don't have that consciousness part uh, is what he says. So is that is what I am trying to uh, relate that particular statement with Brahmana Maharishi's statement. Am I uh, doing the right uh, understanding is what I am saying? Yeah, uh, but before we uh, go into your question, uh, what I am asking is, in, in this talk, is it is it in this talk that Guruji says that, uh, you know, humans, uh, human being consciousness is evolved? Is that what he says here? I remember uh, uh, hearing that, uh, I don't know if it is 59 or 60, okay. but uh, yeah, I did, uh, um, uh, we, we as humans have a higher purpose because we have consciousness, is what I heard. I don't know. Okay. Yes, so but that my is the know. difference between uh, stone, tree and human is what I understood from this uh, talk. Uh-huh. Yeah, let, let's hear what Padmaji and Rupaji has also understood about this particular okay. question by uh, Shubhaji. Now it's an in, it's a interesting question. So let's uh, contemplate. Uh, that will open up many avenues. Yeah, Padmaji. Yeah, so uh, how I understood this is, uh, this analogy which he gave that a man can be said as a moving tree and a tree as a standing man, I think it is essentially like the next sentence that uh, Saravananji has written. It is uh, a pointer towards that, that every, every, uh, every object, including us, is made up of two aspects, the unreal and the real. So if you look at as it, if you look at the tree as a thing, Okay, then it appears to be standing, right? It is static in one place. Although it has, it, we don't say it's not a living thing. It is still living, but it is static there. It doesn't move. But if you look at it as from a consciousness perspective or from a real perspective, then what is a human being? It is the same, but it is moving. So essentially, I think he is arriving at a, a place where it says that all of us are made up of panchabhutas. Whatever it is in this, uh, uh, I mean, in our world, whatever we see, whether it is a tree, an animal, or even ourselves, we are essentially made up of that uh, panchabhutas and the trigunas. So, to when, I think when, when you use when you say ourselves, you mean the body. Ah, yeah, the body. Yeah. So, uh, whatever you see, it is essentially made of that. So, it is basically to distinguish the part which is unreal or which is going to not continue. Okay, like the tree also has a death, right? A tree will die, a plant will die, animal will die, we also will die. So it is essentially to separate the unreal and the real part for us to understand that what is the one that is continuing and what is not the one that is uh, not going to continue. So it is the same for the tree also. The consciousness is not going anywhere. That is only manifesting as the tree, as a flower, as an animal. But the the part which will disappear is essentially made up of only the three gunas and the panchabhutas is how I understood this. I think that is why he gave that analogy where he says that a man is said to be a moving tree and a tree is a, a standing man. Because it is our perspective, like how Saravananji says, how we look at it. For example, a blind man doesn't know what a tree looks like, but he can feel. 
so it is it is his perspective how he would want to interpret the tree as maybe something rough which is very very broad which he can't hold in his two hands something like that but for us it will be a, you know it has different colors it has a shape it has a height all these things come for us so that is the essential thing is what i feel i mean that is how i saw it i understood it very nice rupa ji how about you what is your understanding of uh, the question by shubha ji Vijay ji, actually, I did not understand that part. Okay, all right. Vijay ji, I want to add some more. Yeah, points. please, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. Thanks, Subha ji. Good question. Uh, I'm still thinking on how to, how else to put it. I think uh, uh, we hear this many times, uh, right? Uh, if we don't use the the power of of the intellect. um and act accordingly humans are no different from animals right same way you can you can see that like uh, a, a standing man is just doing what a tree is also doing like breathing and and like the fun body functions are working right or you can say that a a a, a man who's moving right so a standing man you can say that very similar to what a tree is doing right and the moment uh, uh, a man is is uh, once the start once the man starts moving you can say that like hey the man who was standing who was the tree now he is he is moving he is moving he becomes a moving tree right so so it's like how you see right uh, when you when you do when you are at a, at a moment how you are you can become like very similar to the others right it is only when you start using the entire capability of this you actually uh, start using the full full thing and you and you different you you differentiate from the other manifestations otherwise if you don't use all the faculties then like you may become the lowest uh, uh, manifestation of life yeah at that Sir, could you uh, could could we add the uh, Shubha ji's question to that uh, deck? Yeah, uh, but I want to hear uh, Shubha ji. Uh, has it brought uh, clarity? What is the understanding now? Yeah, it is more to do with uh, uh, the uh, what uh, Saravanan ji uh, right now said. I understood that based on that, it is like yeah, uh, when you are uh, stagnant, it uh, doesn't work. When you start uh, having some motion in your uh, this thing, it starts uh, you start getting uh, the your consciousness is there otherwise it's 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 stagnant so you you heard two different explanations one by uh, you know this part from saravanan ji yeah. and what padma ji also said but this this stagnant and moving and thing uh, uh, that explanation uh, i i was able to understand better sir okay So, does it have any connection to what uh, Padma Ji said? What What did Padma Ji say? That everything is nothing but um, pancha bhutas. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is just in the way uh, you know you are labeling things. Mm -hmm. Do you feel yes. this example is relevant to that? Yeah, because in the next line, uh, uh, in uh, in the video, he says everything is pancha bhutas. Hmm. So all. Uh, uh, the uh, the stone uh, everything it's all the same only thing is uh, how we perceive how we we as humans how we do it how we use the uh, uh, thing rather not being in a stagnant but being in motion is what i and uh, yeah how to put um, it across yeah so you are you are still looking at the moving and moving part of a human yeah to Because say okay, that appeal to me more uh, in 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 uh, in terms of understanding the concept better okay let's let's now imagine you know there's a little child who has not seen a human who has not seen a tree okay and let's say uh, you know you are somebody who is like sanjaya right you have been given the divya chakshush now there is a 
I'm not calling the child a Dhritarashtra, but I'm calling a child, uh, you know, who's learning. Now you you moved away from uh, Mahabharata, okay? But still you have the Divya Chakshus. So now you're trying to give this child an explanation of what a human is and what a tree is, let's say. How will you begin? Oh, both of them know they begin uh, as a small uh, uh, seed. True, isn't it? A human baby is born in as uh, you know by the merger of two cells. Similarly, there is a seed which is nothing but a living cell, which is what you know you put into soil. Then you say, you know, a human um, takes birth in the womb, and a seed takes birth in the womb called Earth, Mother Earth. Okay, then what? They both absorb nutrients from the nature, don't they? The baby is getting the nutrient from the mother, but essentially it is the nutrients from the earth only. The seed is also getting the nutrients directly in another kind of a mother. That mother looks slightly different. You know, this mother looks slightly different, but essentially both of them are being fed by the same nutrients. And for both of them, the nutrition is coming from another bigger source called sun. So it's essentially the same nutrients. And both of them seem to be growing. Both of them are growing. Both of them seem to be able to respond to feelings. A tree or a plant responds to your feelings. You know it much better than any one of us. A human being also does. Both of them breathe. In fact, uh, they're complementary in breathing. Actually, my lungs are not here. My lungs are out there in the tree. If the tree is not there, uh, this lung is useless. So now if, this, if you're, you are Sanjaya, you are explaining all this to a child, the child may feel, you know, the only thing is this tree seems to be moving, this tree seems to be standing in one place. And, and the child may say, no, 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 this man, uh, is standing in the same place, this man is moving. Does it, does it make sense? Shubhaji froze with the answer. <laughs> no, I think, sir, it was you who froze. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a completely uh, a different way of teaching. No, I think if, if we if we bring like uh, full science into it, essentially this uh, respiration, reproduction, excretion, all this is common to every living thing in this uh, universe that we like. can perceive of. So, what is different in you is what I think it is uh, pointers pointing to that. Even even existence is same. You have that yeah. additional capability of uh, the consciousness that you can recognize the consciousness. So I think that is what he's arriving at. Finally, that you know when everything is same, what is yeah. different about you? It is the end taking part you I there. Uh, it is the taking you there. I understood. As yeah. humans, we need to recognize our Brahman and. Uh, 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 yeah. the real need, nature is nothing but Brahman is what he is trying to come in the end. Yeah. That I, the end part I understood but in between middle I got stuck. Uh, yeah. So I <laughs> think that is how I, I understood this. Like you know what is what is the common thing if from the Vedantic perspective if we see the common part is only the three gunas and the panchabhutas because it is there in animals Mm. And also in everything, I mean, bird or whatever we see, everything it is there, all the three gunas. So that is what makes them uh, how, who they are, like physically. Yeah. How we label. There is yeah, a, how we label, yeah. Th this can be labeled as a paper. Yeah. This can be labeled as a tree. Yeah. This can yeah. be labeled as a seed. This can be labeled as the energy from the sun. Or this can be totally just nothing but energy. Mm. This can be, oh, it is reflected within me. And who am I? Consciousness. This is nothing but consciousness only. So it's all how much, uh, uh, 
whole uh, awareness of the given object that you bring. So that's why, you know, uh, when, you, when, when we look at the objects, immediately our mind starts labeling. Immediately our name, our, okay, I look at that. Oh, oh, that is, see, oh, that is Saravananji. Oh, he's smiling. Oh, that is Shubhaji. So our mind focuses on the form. Oh, that is Rupaji. So like that, we, we focus on the form and the outer aspects. But uh, what am I truly seeing? So the form that I'm seeing, if at all, you know, I had a little bit more microscopic view. And if let's say I was a, I had a microscopic view, then I can see that it is constantly changing. Like how, you know, if I'm just watching clouds, I can see clouds are constantly morphing, changing in shape. I cannot say this is this is that cloud. By the time I say this is that cloud, it is already morphed. So I cannot really say this is Shubha. What is Shubha? You know, if I had that microscopic, the Shubha that I was looking at a moment ago has, has transformed. It's a cloud, it's a passing cloud. So then what am I truly seeing is the consciousness only. So that's why every name and form, every name and form is a pointer to the consciousness, underlying consciousness. So it is me who's labeling it. The essential, the commonness is Sat and Chit. In everything there is Sat and Chit. And that is reflected within me. And I know my nature. I can never ever say this object exists outside of me. That is why we went into the Jagat Utpati. This object is not at all outside of me. Because this object is appearing in the field of awareness in my screen, which I label as mind, and in there I'm labeling it as a book. This is not outside of me at all. Difficult to <clears throat> say outside of yeah. you because you will need someone else. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because the I mean, word that is someone else, else, also you are only seeing, right? There is no someone else. Ah, the <laughs> word is, is nothing, nothing but uh, that's why this is a great analogy screen, and it is appearing on the screen. And you are the one who is uh, making the screen available. That's all. You can never ever say that, that I've seen a tree, actually, you know, in one sense. How can you say I have seen the tree? What is that you've seen? You've always seen only the reflection of the so-called tree. You've not seen the tree completely. You've always have seen aspects of tree. And that aspect of uh, uh, whatever the scene you've seen seem to be interacting with you. So uh, wonderful uh, entertainment. It seems to be interacting with you. Some, some uh, objects that come into your uh, uh, mind seem to be static, like a stone. Some objects seem to be little more movement. You know, tree seems to sway, seems to uh, shrink uh, when it's cold, seems to expand. A dog uh, has a little bit more animation, seems very closer to uh, how a human being thinks because you are reflecting through the mind of a human. You understand the human. And the human's uh, interaction is much more. But all of it is within your own mind. All are nothing but thoughts in your own mind. Like Saranji put it, ultimately resolves to thought in the mind. So now how you label that thought is all uh, your own uh, uh, creative approach. So this object can be labeled as calling device. This object can be labeled as uh, when I'm angry hitting device. 
this object can be seen uh, labeled as a video device. This object can be labeled as a camera. It's all uh, within me, how I label it. I take one aspect and I label it. So tree is a standing man, man is a stand moving tree. I've used uh, two distinct objectives to put it together. Because I see movement in the, in the man. I see stillness in the tree. And I can recognize the stillness in the man. And I recognize the movement in the tree also. So I, I am putting these ideas together. So it's all I feel how we give name and uh, uh, names to different forms. If we play this game, no, look at, look at that cloud. It looks like an eagle. Now see, now see, now see, suddenly it transformed into a dolphin. Now see, now see, now see. As you keep seeing, you see so many new, new things appear and disappear, appear and disappear. And exactly what is happening here also. But somehow we hold on to certain uh, labels and say, this is Shubha only. I've never seen Shubha actually. Yeah, in that sense. <laughs> Definitely very powerful. Uh, um, actually, it did open up uh, to how I look at people at my own house, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a label you said, like, this person is my wife and yeah. this is my daughter. Then like the moment that name, the moment I label it, it starts giving rise to thoughts saying like, oh, wife, then like you, you, you build up on that, right? Yeah. She should do that. Uh, she should talk to me like this. She should do this. And my daughter, she should listen to me. Uh, all those things. But that label, if I remove, then like there is a, again. <laughs> it's, it's a passing powerful. cloud. It's a passing cloud. Every moment is a passing cloud. But our mind is conditioned to name and form. So therefore, we, we uh, stick on to that name and form. So is this connecting to uh, whatever that statement and your question, Shubhaji? Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Rupaji, is this uh, uh, still a question? Do you have a question still? Uh, uh, no, we don't. Okay, can Actually, you I have some yeah. other questions. Yeah. Are uh, Brahman and Ishwara? Oh, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Before we go to that question, can you phrase your understanding of this particular uh, topic? What you what you had as a question? You said no. You also had this as a question. What is that now? You kind of uh, uh, understand. No, Vijay, next time. No, no issues. Uh, you, you express it the way you feel. Otherwise, if you need some time to kind of put your thoughts together, uh, that's also okay. Actually, I was not able to sit in one place and listen. Okay. Because, uh, that is why I don't want to try it now. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, all right. But please proceed. You, you had some questions. Yeah, uh, I had a doubt. If uh, Brahman and Ishwara are uh, different, uh, I know that Ishwara is actually a part of Brahman only. Uh, is, but my question is, is Ishwara something we perceive as God? So the question is, Brahman and Ishwara are... Are they two different? Are they one? Are there two questions in what you're asking? The first question is, is Brahman and Ishwara different? Is that the first question that you're asking? Yes, yes. And the second question is, is it Ishwara that we perceive as God? Yeah. That's the second question. Okay. All right. Let's, let's hear, uh, you know, from uh, everyone here. Who wants to take the first question first? I'll go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Brahman is the only one and what we call as uh, Nirguna, right? 
no name no form no qualities and uh, the ishwara or the god what we see is what we call a saguna with name with form with qualities and then like all the different gods are like the the ishta devatas like with different different powers of the brahman only brahman is like the one with infinite with like you cannot uh, you cannot list the prop, uh, powers or properties but each one power of the brahman you can you can visualize in 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 a devata form right so so that that's how again uh, all comes from maya from again from the the brahman which is nirguna through the uh, brahman's own power of maya like uh, manifest as um, ishvara and the jiva but the only difference between the ishvara and jiva here is like ishvara is uh, conditioned by ignorance uh, jiva jiva is like we have the we, we we are conditioned by the ignorance that is why we are confused right and we are into samsara right while if you take the the ishvara ishvara is again conditioned with with the knowledge right the awareness the awareness is there right and the knowledge is there and that is why uh, 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 the ishvara doesn't go through the same thing as as jiva but at the end if you see in, in the talk itself prabhu ji says all jiva ishvara they are all, all the same same characters again we are all same characters in that movie conditioned in different different ways right so that that's the relation between uh, the brahman the ishvara and the jiva that's that there's uh, uh, padma ji and shubha ji also want to share your view yeah <clears throat> so uh, to your first question uh, rupa ji i want to say that uh, brahman and ishvara are not different they are the same uh, if i have to uh, give you an easy example uh, in later talks prabhu ji has talked about water ocean and wave in that sense water is brahman ocean is ishvara and wave is you so all three are part of the same thing i mean essential the essential nature is only water for the wave also it's water for the ocean also it's water and then brahman is already water so essentially we are the same that is we are only brahman but as we forget that we are brahman so we don't think that we are as infinite or as big as even an ocean so we have that separatedness between us and say even an ishvara because ocean is very very huge for a wave so there is a separation and then there is a lack and because of that we start looking at something higher than us for any of the sufferings or say any desires we we want to meet we look for something higher than this which can help us so that is how we get into this uh, worshiping of various gods according to what we think i mean according to our culture or what has been inculcated in us that this is our god and you have to worship to that power but essentially it is all the same that is my uh, answer to your first question uh, what was the second question yeah let's hear uh, shubha ji's view also on the first question that way mm. we can then yeah, see yeah. Uh, we, we we can make sure that rupa ji can yeah, uh, understood it. yeah yeah, yeah. shubha ji okay. what is your uh, view on the first question is brahman and ishvara same or different so uh, in one line if i have to say it's like we are the jiva trying to realize brahman through ishvara excellent you want to add further or uh, you want to stay at that yeah i want to stay at that because that's how i understood the really? <laughs> punchline <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> very nice so shubha shubha ji is the mahavakya karta 
yes <laughs> she will give the mahavakya and you figure it out <laughs> very nice no, no uh, wonderfully put sir i had one question uh, rupa ji were you able to like go through all the uh, previous videos or uh... yes she has gone through one class right with the other group they have finished yeah it was actually with venkat ji's group earlier okay yeah. okay no i don't know that i so maybe i think the... when when she was she came first day maybe i was not there okay that's why yeah, yeah. I, i was asking yeah okay so now uh, the question to rupa ji so is brahman and ishvara same are different through the explanation through three ways of uh, you know hearing the answer what is your response has it become clear to you yeah actually uh, we take uh, uh, the world as jiva jagat and ishvara so we understand here uh, uh, that uh, ishvara is nothing but a part of brahman only or uh, it's brahman only actually and uh, my second question was uh, if uh, ishvara is uh, something we uh, what we perceive as god, god correct like, correct yeah uh, before before we take that question oh. for the first, first question now you are clear that the ishvara is nothing but brahman only yes yes in what way uh, like shubhaji said we actually realize god through ishvara only because uh, uh, i was talking about the second question because i feel that uh, we perceive god as uh, ishvara and uh, uh, that is how uh, we come to know about brahman isn't it actually uh, just like one request can you remove the english word and and use only one word and see what happens what you use Two words, Ishvara and God. So, so I want to know: is there a difference between the two? Yeah, actually, both are same. Okay, so you are right now using Ishvara as God. Yes, we worship uh, God, isn't it? Excellent. So, what is it we are worshiping? we are actually worshiping uh, god in some form ah. actually brahman doesn't have any form but uh, it is we human who have created uh, the shape uh, because we can't our mind doesn't uh, uh, cannot concentrate uh, cannot uh, see anything with, with, which has uh, which doesn't have any form this is the reason we have created the uh, shape of gods and we worship it excellent and ishvara is the sum total of all the forms that you see i did not understand that the tree the mountain the river the uh, uh, cre- creeping crawling moving creature um, everything put together all this put together samasht this the the so called visible uh universe whatever our eyes can perceive is what we call as ishvara but that is brahman no vijay ji the essential nature of it is brahman okay ha huh. wave is a visible phenomena what is wave one can say oh it is part of the ocean what is ocean is ocean different from wave somebody who is looking from outside will say no 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 a wave is appearing and disappearing in the ocean but the wave, if you are sitting in the wave you may think oh i am different you know i am there look at that that's a big wave oh that's a small wave but someone outside will say no 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 wave is nothing but something that is appearing and disappearing in the ocean what is there ocean only re i can see ocean only because it is visible for somebody but then the next thing water is not so obvious answer this is the essential nature of ocean what is the essential nature of ocean what is the essence of ocean water, water. ha ah. can you show me water you will say hey everything is water but how do i show you water only there is no way to show water in one sense 
So see that, you know, you cannot pick a drop and say, this is water. Then what about others? So you, the essential nature cannot be shown, but you can realize that. Only you, through your, uh, you know, inner perception, you know, oh, that is water. But what is water? Show me what is water. If I ask you, show me gold, you'll show me some form. Look here, this is gold. Look here, this is gold. But I'll say, that is an ornament. Show me gold. Oh, that is our, this is made up of gold. So what it is made up of is the gold. But what I'm seeing is the ornament. I'll always be seeing it through an ornament only. Even when the gold is digged from the earth, it is still some, see, this is a, a golden ore. I will say, look, this is ore. I still need to purify and make uh, extract gold. But show me gold. I cannot show you gold, but I know gold is the essence. Because I'm always seeing in the visible universe, I'm always seeing the shapes and the forms. I cannot see gold. I can realize gold. I, 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 I realize the essence is gold. I cannot see water. I can realize the essential nature is water. I cannot see Brahman. Through Ishwara, I can realize the essential nature is Brahman. Consciousness. So Nirguna Saguna. So the nobody, you're a nobody. What is there to imagine? Nothing to imagine. You are, uh, you are, you are like uh, uh, Dr. Rajkumar's nose. Oh, you have a voice like uh, Lata Mangeshkar. Oh. You, you have uh, ears like that uh, uh, very sharp hearing, you know, that uh, the dog also is very sharp. So now you start connecting to different aspects. So Ishwara is uh, all possible aspects of the Brahman and they're infinite. So the aspect of Brahman is infinite. Infiniteness cannot be comprehended. So when, when the form appears, ah, see Sri Krishna, look how nice his face is. Look, he has a flute. Oh, he has this. And look, he is playing with a cow. So that gives us a portal, a viewpoint, an entry point. It's like, uh, you know, a dark room and a small window opens and uh, ah, see that, see that scene, see that, see this scene. You can see some scene, but is it the whole? Not at all. But it has helped you to recognize the scene. So the form is a pointer to the essence. Brahman is the essence. Awareness. And awareness is in everything because you are the one who's perceiving all the other things. And all of them are appearing and disappearing in you. When I feel I am a limited body and mind, I am a wave. When I raise up and see, oh, this is all appearing and disappearing in me. All of it. This infinite universe, galaxies, I, you know, as long as my eyes go, there is uh, it's going, going, going. All of this, my God, such a big universe. But truly, where is all of it? Where is all these billions and billions of stars? In your mind. You are seeing all of it in your mind. So, which must be bigger than all of this? Your mind. So, Ishwara. And who are you truly? You are the light in whose presence all of these are being lit. And that light is 
nirguna. It has no attachment or detachment to any object. It is not saying this is mine, that is yours. There is nobody else to say. So all of it is projection and uh, dissemination into that light. Appearance and disappearance. So to illustrate that in a kind of a pictorial way, there is this um, some illustrations that we drew up. Yeah. In the meantime, even this um, Ishvara, if you see, we have projected in a human form. For animal or for a tree or for something, they, it's not necessary that it has to be in a human form. Right? Like we want to see the Ishwa as someone like more powerful than as to us because we are used to this form as like two eyes or eyes. When I'm a, when I'm a, a wave, oh, there is something uh, bigger than me. So the viewpoint I take, I'm at the bottom of the uh, mountain and I say, mountain is so big. At the top of the mountain, mountain is under me. how we perceive. As a wave, I see the world out there and I see something must be cause of this. So I am this Jiva and there is world and there is Ishwara. Jiva, Jagat and Ishwara. This is how it is initially. And Ishwara must be the creator of this. And I am separate from Ishwara is a beginning point. And Tattva Bodha is asking us to ask the question, is it true? So then first Tattva Bodha helps us to go deeper within ourselves. What I consider as Jiva is nothing but this body and mind. So first it is asking us to verify, am I truly the body in the Atma Tattva Viveka through the Panchakosha Prakriya, it is basically eliminating who I am not. So here we are seeing the same thing in the form of what is the journey of a human body? How does a human body really begin and end? See, it begins in the womb and it goes to the tomb. That's the human body. And it is continuously changing. It is something that is continuously growing, morphing. It's a passing cloud. From here to here, continuously it's a passing cloud. It's continuously changing the body. And see, the you, the, when you say I am, you're aware of this change. You look at your small photo, baby photo, and say, I am, oh, this is me only. Oh, this is me only. This is me only. So something within you, which is not changing, is, is, is the reason why you are able to recognize all these changing forms. So the changing is the body. The unchanging is that awareness. And that is you who is saying, oh, this is changing. So through this prakriya, you can clearly see you cannot be the changing because if you are the changing, you cannot recognize the change. So you must be something that is not changing.
So now let's go a little subtler. This is the grass body. Grass body, you can clearly see. I'm not the grass body. You can easily conclude because it's continuously changing and you're aware of that change. You, you've noticed the change. You've seen the change. Um, uh, my sixth birthday, I was there. This photo, but oh, this is my sixth birthday photo. But this is my uh, 25th year uh, wedding anniversary photo. So like that, you know, you're able to see. But uh, when somebody else, uh, uh, you know, that uh, uh, small alien baby comes and sees, hey, this is a different shape, or oh, this is a different shape. Why are you calling it the same? This must be something else, this must be something else. No, if that alien baby asks that question, you say, no, 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 it's my photo only. Uh, it's, it's me, it's me. It's like the, uh, the cloud is continuously morphing. See now eagle, you, when the shape is like an eagle, you'll say eagle. Now it's a dolphin. As the shape changes, you give a different name. But here, you're not giving a different name. It is Rupa only, it's Rupa only, it's Rupa only. So which is incorrect, no. So what is changing cannot be you then. So through that, you can clearly recognize that the body is changing and you are aware of the change. Now notice something more subtler, so-called mind. What is mind truly? Mind is nothing but collection of information about the world, isn't it? Otherwise, you will not be aware of the world. If there are no thoughts, you will never know that there is a mind. And what is a thought? Something about something in the world. And how does it develop? A small baby has no mind. As the small baby grows, people put concepts into the baby. Various impressions that come through the five senses, the baby starts collecting and puts it in its mind, in, in, in its memory. And that's what it calls as mind. No, when, whenever you say mind, what is the mind? The ability to think, the ability to feel, memory, discrimination, all of this put together is what is mind. You are not aware of all this power unless there is some content to operate on. And how does the content come? From your senses. If there is no content, like in your deep sleep, there is no content, but you are there. So the contentless existence is Brahman. And as the content appears, it becomes Saguna. So the content, that is what is mind. And the mind, unlike the body, doesn't appear and disappear with the body. The mind or the collection of all the impressions, it stays. And that is the one which is cause of another body. As long as there is content, there is another body. And you get connected with that content. Oh, I am, uh, uh, you know, mother. Are you a mother? You became, a, you, be, you got into a role called a mother when your child, first child was born. Till then you are not a mother, you are there but. Oh, I am a wife. Before you got married, you were still there but you are not a wife. You got into a role called wife. So all these are mental concepts. Wife, mother, good, bad. All of these, this is who I am, I get connected. So that wrong association carries as a subtle body from one life to another life. I love idli. Your child comes and asks, can you make idli? So that love for idli is what and makes you to go back and again and cook idli. So again and again, love for something, want to do something, all those desires is what keeps raising and disappearing in the uh, in the screen called mind and that is the matter for the next change. The next moment is because of certain desire in the mind. See this moment is happening because we are desirous of realizing our true nature. So therefore we are all spending time here. So this is also an activity. This is also something. The seed of this activity 
who has shown some time back when we don't know some you know it's a deep desire i have to realize my true nature that seed is making all of us sit here uh, look at all this discuss all this so the seed in the form of the some kind of a thought is what is now shaping as a reality this moment is a reality because of certain seed called a thought and the thought cannot be seen thought is unseeable mind is unseeable so unlike the body body goes from womb to tomb mind is womb to womb so it's it is the one which is set, uh, going it is the one which is taking birth so in one sense uh, you know rupa one moment ago is no more the rupa but the rup the rupa now is because of the continuation of the thought process in the mind and you are constantly aware of this various feelings and thoughts come and go in your mind and you are aware of that so you cannot be the mind you are the one who is aware of the mind now finally tatva bodha brings us to okay let us look at the world what is world really i see a rose i hear something i smell something like that you know is how we act with the world fundamentally and what are they actually what is a rose something that appears in your mind as a sensation and you gave it a name called rose a small baby doesn't give a name because there is no memory of it so a new place you have never been to say uh, timbuktu you never been to you have no concept about it it's just a word for you so there is no judgment there is no thought about it so world is what nothing but you can you can see it as a stream of sensations that keep coming at you through your eyes through your ears through your nose through your tongue through your uh, touch it's just a information sensation it keeps coming at you that sensation you give it a name and uh, uh, you know uh, place in your memory and you you work with that oh this is my child coming and talking to me now my child oh this is uh, Uh, my uh, house i need to clean it now so like that you are the one who is interacting with these objects so world is not out there really world is actually in here so fundamentally you've never seen anything outside of you you always seen everything within you and you are always there and these things are appearing and disappearing so even the world is nothing but a thought and you the i am is aware of the changes you are the only one who is not changing all that is is brahman only in that the entire thing appears and disappears and that is the power of brahman only called maya or in other words it's the mind what is mind if there was no change of objects 
you would never become aware that there is something called as a mind. So what is Maya? Change. Mind, Maya, they are all the same. Nānu nānembudu nānalla Ideha manabuddhi nānalla Sachidānanda ātma shivanānu nāne Shivoham 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 Ātma darshanam Brahma darshanam Brahma darshanam Satya darshanam To know the self. See recognition of the self, who I am is actually recognition of the whole. Because I and this and that are not two. Is to know God. To know God is to be God. To be God is to know the truth. When you say lokaha samastaha sukhino bhavanto, you are not wishing somebody, oh, I am being so great. Somebody, let them be happy, healthy, peaceful. When you are eating food, oh, this is my finger, this is other's finger. There is no such concept. May, may all my fingers be uh, peaceful. You say, okay, prayer, no. You are telling yourself, you are part of me, you are part of me. And we are together. You are not wishing somebody else. You are wishing yourself. May all be happy, healthy, peaceful. Because you are me, I am you. If there is somebody called a God, that is how God would function, no? Rupaji, is this bringing a clarity to your question? Yes, Rupaji. All right. Then, uh, shall we conclude our today's session here? Yes. So, looks like uh, another uh, three, right? Maybe another two, three sessions. And then I think, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have, uh, like how we are doing the Bhagavad Gita, no? Maybe a, a summary presentation by everybody uh, with, a, uh, and the others will put questions. So we'll, we'll have a, this is the tradition of the Vedanta. So there is a, you know, somebody comes up and says, uh, okay, I've realized. Then the, there are so-called Purva Pakshis. And the Purva Pakshis are uh, to ask questions, not to humiliate them, but to uh, deepen or to get that clarity. It's like you all see you know, how uh, in the Rishikas, how there was a discussion. Um, so that is an important process. Yes, Rupaji? Yeah. What did you say? Shastrat. Shastrat. Shastrartha. Uh, yeah. Ah. So uh, it, it, uh, it's like that uh, Mandana Mishra and uh, Sri Shankaracharya discussion. And it was uh, judged by none other than Mandana Mishra's wife. That's been the tradition. It is not to put down Mandana Mishra. And Mandana Mishra was more than happy to recognize the Sri Shankaracharya as his teacher. So like that, that is the tradition. So, uh, and uh, we're all lucky to be walking in that path. Sir, I have one question. Yeah. There are more videos, right? I mean, I'm what, I'm, I finished 69 and now I'm going to 70. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's there, no? Yeah, no, because yeah. sir said only three more, so I am 
I am thinking, what am I watching? <laughs> we, 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 we will take uh, this year. <laughs> no, what I what I meant is sorry. Uh, maybe not in the uh, topic wise, okay. but the day wise yeah. chart. There, uh, we are almost like uh, you know in the thirteenth. There are only fourteen day talks. Okay, okay. I I didn't go through the day talks at all this time. Uh, but this is easier, no? So after Saranandhi started doing this, I, I am only doing <laughs> this. So yeah. in that way, we are more, uh, almost at the end and we are in the uh, Tattva Bodh also, we are in the last chapter. Yeah, the last chapter. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful. All right. So, um, Rupaji, uh, looks like your internet is uh, better now. Will you please lead us in the prayer? The closing prayers? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Om lead me from untruth, ignorance to truth, darkness to light, impermanence or death to permanence or immortality. Self is the whole. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamaduchate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Om, that is complete. This is complete. When completeness is removed from completeness, what remains is complete. When completeness is added to completeness, total remain, totality remains complete. Om, peace, peace, peace. Who am I? Nanu nanim nanalla Satchidanandatma Shivananu Nane Shivoham 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 I am not the body, mind, intellect. I am pure consciousness, Shivaswarupi. I am true self is liberation. Atma Darshanam Brahma Darshanam Brahma Darshanam, Satya Darshanam. Recognition of self is recognition of the whole. Recognition of the whole is the truth. May all be free from suffering. Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urar Urvarukam Urvaraka Iva Bandhanan Mrityor Mukshi Mrityor Mukshi Amamrata Mrityor Mukshi Amamrata We worship the third eye, we eyed one who is fragrant and who nourishes all. Like the fruit falls from the bondage of the stem, may we be liberated from death, from mortality. So, as a jiva, there is a jagat and there is a divine power that is operating. So, as a jiva, uh, there is a prayer. There is a divine power which helps. But through that prayer, the seeking is to realize my ultimate nature. So, there is no... Uh, Contradiction here. It is the standpoint of where I, from where I am uh, talking. The bottom of the mountain, middle, top. As the one who recognizes the true nature, then there is no question of God and uh, there is no separation. Is it making sense? 
लोका समस्ता सुखी नो भवंतु मे ऑल बीइंग्स वी हैव बी हेल्दी एंड पीसफुल थैंक यू वेरी मच रूपा जी थैंक यू ऑल हरिओम विजय जी हरिओम हरिओम या सो एज आई सेड यू नो नेक्स्ट संडे डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द इंटरनेट आई लेट